And I'll tell you guys since we're since we're all friends. Every character I write has a piece of me in them. Hi, I'm Lee Bardugo. You're listening to the Grisha Cast. Welcome to Grisha Cast, episode 84. In this episode, we will be discussing chapters 12 and 13 from the book Rule of Wolves. This is your host, Eric. And I'm Terry. From Nashville, Tennessee, this is your podcast for all things Grishaverse. A world created by our waffle loving friend, Lee Bardugo. Moi, Savienyi Casters. Hello. We have some listener cities. We do. First, we have St. <laughs> Albert, Canada. Oh, thank you. And then we've got Espoo, Finland. Yay! Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, Espoo. Thank you, Espoo. I've been saying your name over and over again just because it's so much fun to say. It is fun. So it'd be really fun to visit. I should put that on my list. Oh, yeah. I want to visit Finland anyway. Oh, well, we have to go to Espoo. Yeah, we do. So, anyways... How have you been? I'm good. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's very good. Oh, I'm good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, just chilling along. Yeah. Well, I will lead into my funny little story then. <laughs> Happened today. So, for those of you that can watch this video, here is this little itty bitty ism rude pin. Um, if you've seen any of our stuff, like, I mean, there's a little cartoon of me dressed up in the Izzermood costume. Anyways, we've made like little pins. I had one on my backpack. Um, anyways, um, I was finished with work today and I was so excited and um, I couldn't wait to get in my car and I sat down and went, oh! And I looked and there was my missing Izzermood pin. I totally like it had fallen off, which meant the cap was still in my backpack. And Izumrud was just facing right up with his little pointy end right on my seat. <laughs> so. You got a little Izumrud surprise. <laughs> I did. And like, I don't know if, I'm sure most of you understand when you're excited to leave work, that <laughs> jump you have when getting into your seat, into your car to drive away is like this moment like, you can't get in there fast <laughs> enough. So I dug into that. Oh. I know. I've checked. I'm surprised he didn't stick. <laughs> um, Are you bleeding? <laughs> I um I haven't checked yet. But um this um this pin, anyways. Um so it, it's seen some things now. It has. Uh but that was a fun little thing that happened today. It hurt. I was embarrassed. Luckily no one was there. So now I'm just telling all of you. <laughs> Only our closest friends. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this is a mood pin did not stick on. So we're just going to have to make sure that we, when we get some more merch, that we use a company that has ones that fasten on a little bit the better. The little locking ones. Yeah. Like, yeah, I this, have some that really just, like, in there. Yeah, this one, definitely not all no. up in there. The no, the little rubbery ones don't really no. stay. It got all up in somewhere that I didn't want it to. And I <laughs> Yes. It hurt too. <laughs> I mean, wasn't needing like a blood blood check. Wasn't checking my <laughs> ketones. <laughs> Some isn't rude bloodletting. Oh, hmm. well, bless. Uh, yeah, I know. It's been a minute since we've covered covered the chapters, so we're glad to be back. Yes, and we do want to say that we would like for you to run on over to our YouTube channel at Grisha Cast. And check out all of our little extra videos. Our Grishy Cast After is now on YouTube. And we would just absolutely be tickled to death if you would subscribe and look through the videos and give the ones that you love a like and help us out. We would greatly appreciate it. Yes, there's going to be some really fun Grishaverse, like extra content that you Grishaverse fans are going to love. And then there's going to be extra content about Terry and I just doing some silly stuff. And it's just going to be a lot of good stuff. We, that one that's up there right now is a episode of What If, where 
a friend and I did a what if, and we just like went on and like went on the tangent that I'm sure some of you Grishaverse fans would love. I loved it. It was really fun. Um, so we'll just be having more of that, and yeah, it's gonna be really cool. And and we also have um a welcome to Oz Alta University video that was an exclusive when it first mm. came out, but now you can go see it on yeah. our YouTube channel. Yes, we're it's silly and ridiculous. It is, <laughs> but that's what we are. So we'll be doing uh-huh. more of those. I I was thinking, you know, maybe the ones that we recorded that were just like when we made our commercials that were just like the without video, maybe we should go back and try to make videos of them. It could be kind of fun. Yeah. Since we already have the script for mm-hmm. it. We should have videos for that. Yeah. But anyways, that's that's what's going on. <laughs> so go check it out. It's going on. It is. So Oh, we, you're first, aren't you? That's what I was just thinking. I was like, wait a minute. Who's going first? Who's going what what what? You're first. Okay. So we're doing chapter 12, which is Nikolai, and I'm reading this opening quote because it kind of gives us a good reminder of where we left off since it's been a minute. So, here's the quote. Zoya hadn't waited to say goodbye. Alina had been contacted, and thanks to her generosity, or an unhealthy taste for martyrdom, had agreed to the meeting. Zoya had arranged the mission with predictability... Uh, a pred- <laughs> predictably ruthless efficiency. And a week later, she was gone. Before dawn, without fanfare or parting words, Nikolai was both stung and grateful. She was right. The gossip around them had become a liability, and they had enough of those already. Zoya was his general, and he her king. Best for everyone to remember that. And now he could visit the little palace without having to worry about bumping into her and enduring her acid tongue. End quote. So I thought that was a great like reminder of where we left off, you know? So Zoya's gone, and now it's just Nikolai, and um yeah, Zoya's off also going to see Alina, so can't wait for those upcoming chapters. Alina! But we're not there yet. So <laughs> Nikolai is going to the infirmary to go visit. Airy. So when he gets there, poor Airy is hairless and her skin is like this. Like, like a pale, naked mole rat. A little pale pink. Um, she's not looking too good. Um, however, she is very lucky to be alive. Um, Ginny said that it would be a couple more days for um, of work for her to get her hair and skin looking better because apparently she doesn't have like any hair. <laughs> like... Um, no eyebrows, uh, that's all gone. <laughs> so, um, but she wouldn't be alive if those Grisha healers weren't there to help and weren't there quickly to help her survive. So, anyways, Ari tells Nikolai to leave, um, once again. I guess he's like, um, every time Ari comes, um, Nikolai comes to visit Ari, she's just like, no, leave. Um, she mentioned, uh, mentions about how she, how she looks, and Nikolai has this wonderful response, which is, you are pink and rather hairless, like a baby, and people love babies. I love that <laughs> quote. I just think that's so funny. What a way to, like, I love Nikolai turning it around, you know? Because, I mean, you know he's got to be looking at her like, you look horrible, but I'm not going to say that to you. <laughs> he so, has to be charming. You look like pink and rather hairless, like a baby. Like a baby. Like a baby. Okay, so... Nikolai stays and keeps carrying on a lovely conversation, even though she keeps throwing out rude comments about just everything. Grisha and everything, blah, blah, blah. So Ari um, begins to cry a little and asks, because they're talking about the accident, and she's wondering why the top Karad would do such a thing. Why, why she feels like, why she looks like this. And... She explains to Nikolai finally, like, what had happened before the accident. Um, and a letter had arrived from her sister, and the guards had read it, she had read it, and the guards told her that it was a message just saying that they needed it was they needed to escape. And it was an escape plan. Ari didn't believe that it was anything else. That was just it. Um, so Nikolai's like, hold a sec. And he runs, and he goes and gets Mayu. And then he wheels Mayu in, who, by the way, is in a wheelchair. <laughs> um, because she's so powerful that they don't need her, like, 
doing all her soldier stuff. So the Grisha have like numbed her down a little bit so she can't, which is horrible <laughs> when you think about it. Um, so she can't like break out. Anyways, he brings Mayu in um, and Nick, Nikolai had showed Mayu the letter beforehand and she then tells Ari that there was a poem or a line from a poem in there. Um, and the poem was about a group of deer being hunted um, by a pack of dogs. And instead of being hunted down, they decide to jump off a cliff together. Obviously, this has a deeper message um, for that the guards understood, which was pretty much kill yourselves <laughs> and kill our lovely Aerie, um with you. So... Ari doesn't understand why her sister would do this. Nikolai then tells her about how much the Shu people love Ari, and they would not want her hurt. Um, Queen Makai planned this whole attack, and then Nikolai explains, and here is a quote, She was counting on their love for you. If you had perished with the Tav Karad the other day, I would have no way to prove that they had died by their own hand or that you had been their victim. When your death became known, the Shu people would have risen up, demanding action, and Queen Makai would have ha- would have what she wants, an excuse for war, end quote. So I think that was a good, dis- you know, description of what exactly was really going on. Eri realizes how her sister doesn't know that her and Mayu are still alive, so that's interesting. And Nikolai takes Mayu back to her room. Um, bye, Ari. <laughs> Leave me alone. Looking like a little cat. Like a little naked mole rat. Oh, naked mole rat. Um, but Nikolai goes and has a conversation with Mayu back in her room um, about how he knows where her brother is, which is a big thing. And Mayu's brother happens to be a soldier that is one of the care good soldiers. And Nikolai is trying to get them pretty much, he wants... Mayu and Ari to be on their side, you know, to help him out. And so it's just it's not going to be easy, obviously. Um, so he's just, he's trying to get them. So he tells um, Mayu, you know, in hopes that maybe this will help her, that he'll have the Grisha stop weakening her, however they're doing that. I'm sure they described it, but it's been so many weeks <laughs> since I read this, I can't remember. Um, but um, he's going to stop that. And she's like, really? And he's like, yes. So, <laughs> anyways, part two of my chapter. Um, Nikolai has to go meet David at Las Lyon. And he's supposed to ride, but decides that he's, at the very last minute, going to fly. He's just like, you know what? I'm just going to fly one of my little helicopter thingies and contraptions, whatever. The demon, by the way, his pet loves to fly <laughs> while you're talking about your dog loving to ride. Well, Nikolai's demon just loves to fly. So he and he, him and his demon just jump in and they um they fly, start flying over, and all of a sudden get struck by something. It seems like a missile. Um and then all of a sudden, Nikolai remembers, oh, they were having um, they were having missile tests over at Las Lyon, which is why he was supposed to ride. And so, anyway, <laughs> luckily his team on the ground save him. He almost has a crash landing and pretty much would have blown up and died. But um, his Grisha help him um, by like having him kind of like hit a like from what I'm guessing like a cushion of air, but, like boop, boop, <laughs> you know, so, like what? Yeah, just a boop, boop. one and more time. Okay, I got it now. Thanks. Okay, good. I was just making sure. <laughs> so, um, he didn't die. Jenny, of course, runs over and is trying to heal him. And Nikolai wants nothing more than to pretty much just hear about the missiles. Because apparently now, since he's been struck by a missile, he's like, oh my god, maybe the missiles work. What a great time to talk about this. <laughs> and um, Jenny's like, no, 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 no. I need to heal you. Um, but they, him and David do have a conversation about what's going on and says that the issue actually with the missiles 
is that they don't have enough of a metal that they're trying to get that is actually the weight is a lot lighter so that way it would help them be able to like maneuver them and be able to actually like you know have them work better also one little slip that david is not really wanting to happen is in what nikolai is is david knows where this is going and david I mean, come on, David's a Grisha, and he wants to create things that people can use that are useful. Um, recently, all he's been doing is making things that kill people, or that are helping kill people. So he says the term, he does not want to make a city killer. And, hey, that's where it's going. I mean, they're in the middle of a war. So they talk about the weak prince that's in Fjorda, and how this is kind of gonna, they're just, this this war is gonna get bigger and badder and they've got to have something um they were very lucky last time they mentioned how the apparat is still in fjorda and they know that fjorda isn't going to stop and they've got to figure out a way they've got to just figure out something else they got lucky last time but they've got to have something else so that's why the city killer almost idea is coming up they've got to come up with something that's going to help them um but that's pretty much the end of that chapter it leaves us wondering what is going to happen with this war um, and how they're going to come up with something else. You know, what is their next move? Because they don't have any, and they've got to get these missiles to work. So maybe they'll get that more <laughs> ma- more metal. I don't know. What did you think of that chapter? Did you enjoy it? Did I do a good job? <laughs> <Yeah>. just... <laughs> Great well, job. Well, thanks. <laughs> I'm looking for compliments. It was... It was one of those where you just get a little more like information. It wasn't, you know, like action heavy. Yeah, which is a, I like those in these war books because you need those down moments. Yeah, you need a break. You do. <laughs> Definitely. There. But, yeah. Chapter 13, mm-hmm. Nina, which that whole sentence makes me happy because 13 is my favorite number and Nina. That's my favorite so, number. I was born on the 13th. Thank you very much. I know. <laughs> and that's, you're. It's my lucky number two. Doesn't mean we can't both. It's why we're best friends. God. Come on, share it. Jeez, <laughs> I'm not great at sharing. Well, um, learn. But... <laughs> wow. Beep. Woo. Girl. So Be feisty. I got my teeth. <laughs> um. So the last time we were with Nina, remember they had to go talk to the queen, <laughs> and um. So this time Nina's coming back from talking with the queen. And the family, as in, you know, rooms, <laughs> have a little chat about how they need to be careful because these are some dangerous times, not knowing where the queen or the prince's heads are at. You have no idea what's going on with the war and everything else. So they're like, e- we got to we gotta lay low and be cool. Mm-hmm. Um, one interesting note that I kind of made a little, little mark in, Broom says laughing at me. No. Ruth says to be on your guard because the ice court is no place for soft hearts and Nina says something in her head about Niwa Sesh which, which means I have no heart. Why would she say that? Is it I mean just say because I mean he's saying that like is it because it's a place because you can't have no you, well okay so what he just said that it's a place there's no place for soft hearts and she says, I have no heart. Yeah, don't worry about me. I don't got got a heart. But like, is it because of the whole Natalia situation? Is it because oh. of she's now in charge of all this death? Is it like it's just a weird thing to say, like I, I don't have a heart. I think it's I think it's personally right now, like I mean, she's just any way to make sure that Broom doesn't think of her in any other way. It besides just like I mean, you, well, she's thinking this. She's not saying it out loud, but like, is it maybe that she's saying like she doesn't have? Oh, okay. So she didn't. She say just this. doesn't have any emotions about the situation. Maybe I don't know. Well, I mean, I don't think she has. Like, I feel like her heart did. Like, I think she looks at her heart as at how it has been broken. Yeah, possibly. I mean. You're right. That changes everything. I thought you said she said that. But she, she just thinks it. She's thinking it. Well, so, I just thought it was a little interesting tidbit there. Yeah, that is. 
Um, so the next day, they're at this shindig where they see Vedic Dimidov, which, if you don't remember, no. that is the um, one that's saying that they... Um, <laughs> being rough over here. Um, that they're the one that is next in line to the throne. Um, really the up. pretender, is that what they're saying? Yeah. Um, the and the apparat is with him. Um, and, but before they could get closer... They're called to the prince, who apparently is in this really bad mood. Um, yeah. But they're talking about dresses, and um, he's asking Nina about why she's dressed down when Hannah's dressed up. And I got this, I, I pulled this hell? quote because I thought it was funny. She says, I wouldn't know what to do in silks or satin. A profound lie. She could think of nothing better than sliding about naked on satin sheets. Mm, Matthias mm. would have been scandalized. And what about and what would Hannah think? The thought popped into her head on Biden, followed by a wave of guilt. Unquote. So she's thinking some naughty thoughts about Hannah. Well, that's good. <laughs> kind of what we want. I know. We, we want so to get there. Bring that on. Because I am shipping them hard. Yes. So um Hannah. On the other hand, is sitting there healing the prince while they're sitting there. Honey, um, you got to be careful, girl. I know. Jeez. Um, we learned that Joran, who is the guard to the prince, um, did something to Broom at some point and now, quote, must play nanny to a weakly prince. So hmm. there's some there's some tea there. That, that is some tea. Yeah. What did he do to Broom? That Broom didn't kill him. I don't know. But gave him this weird task. Which, by the way, real quickly, I'm sorry for just referring to Hana and saying grr. I realized I was probably, that was not correct. Sorry about that. I I didn't take it as assuming pronouns. I took it as in your. I always say grr. It's like how people say dude. I know. But. <laughs> I know. This, yeah. I just wanted I to real quickly know. since I caught it. Just to um, apologize if that offended anybody. Well, it's good to be aware. Exactly. So they take this opportunity to ask about Vedic Dimidov, which I have to say his whole name. It just sounds weird to just say Vedic to me. Like, I know. Vedic Dimidov. Um, the prince calls him a boring lump of country bumpkin <laughs> who was found well. shivering in obscure dacha he couldn't afford to heat. Tell us how you really feel. Yeah, that's really descriptive. <laughs> But he summons him over, and of course the apparat is like right behind him, like a little puppy. Ugh. Um, Nina, I'm tired of this <laughs> I know here he comes again. I don't know how he travels so far, I... like, and he's so like I feel I feel like he like moves like so slow. So I feel like him moving, getting all the way up. Yeah. Here, how the hell did he make it up in there? all of his little tunnels? Slowly. I I well, hell, know. we need to send Ismrud to go eat him. That would be great. Ismrud. Sick. Go. Sick him. Go get him. Get him. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Nina actually is looking at Vedic um, and saying that he actually looks just like the king that was exiled. Remember, mm. Nic Nikolai's family right. um, was exiled. Um, so Vedic apparently looks just like the king. Isn't it the second time that we've like kind of like gotten another hint that they really look alike? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and the, and Vedic actually also knows Rafkin um, because he and the apparat are saying something about Hannah's haircut. They don't they don't like her haircut. Well, Remember she shaved her hair off? Yeah. Well, you can step back and just deal with your own hair. I know. It's blonde and fluffy. Why we got to judge people by exactly. their hair? Jeez. You're Puritan. Um, so the apparat is talking about saints, which apparently Vedic knows about. And I have this quote for Eric. Specifically, hmm. quote, I always liked that wonderfully bloody book, the one with all the illustrations of martyrdoms, end quote, oh. to which the apparat replies that they are meant for education and not entertainment. So, Eric, remember that. Well, sorry. <laughs> Lee Bardugo specifically said it was my love letter, so it will be whatever it is and what I want it to be. So, mm, apparat, I'll use it for education and. A lot of entertainment. A lot of it. You know what? I'm going to get in my bed. I'm going to get my lives of saints. And I'm I just. I don't know where this is coming. It was going okay, to a very gonna... bad place, but I was just going to rub it in the apparatus face. Wow. So, yeah. 
So hey, <laughs> exactly. How, the apparat is a character that Lee came up with. So you can't even, yeah. Lee can just write you out. Jeez. He can erase you. Mm-hmm. Don't um, mess with me. So interesting enough, the apparat seems disgusted by the starless saint followers. Well, Vedic says his first order of business when he becomes king will be to find those followers and stop their heresy. So that to me was interesting that the apparat yeah. is is kind of I guess guiding him in that aspect. Well, and it's also interesting because if you've read Lives of Saints, which none of you have because I'm sure I'm I know some of you have, but I can't talk about it, <laughs> but I want to. Um, so they asked the prince about the love letters, and he says that they are in the Druskela sector, which yeah. is the most secure, unbreachable part of the ice court. So now we got to go there. I went back and looked at the map of that. Yeah. Actually. We, we got to go. We got to go back into the ice court to get these things. Yeah. So Nina has a plan. Oh, of she says does. the day of the hunt, which I think is tomorrow, they will be outside. On Friday? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Best hunt on Friday, girl. <laughs> you got to start the weekend off right. Yes. They will be hunt. going. Um, they'll be outside for, um, for like a part of it. And then they'll ask to see the kennels. Can we please see the puppies? So these hunts sound like, I mean, they're obviously going and hunting like deer, antelope. Yes, with I don't think like there's an antelope. with like doggies, which is why they want to go see the kennels. And mm. Hana will draw out the plans of the Druskela buildings from her memory of going in with her father. Um, Hana does not like this plan, but Nina tells her not to worry because she has a gift for getting past Fearden defenses. That's the end of the chapter. But the question is. Is she literally talking about the ice court or is she talking about Bearden's in general, like Matthias and Hannah? Because she says, I have a gift for getting past Bearden defenses. So is she talking about mm-hmm. the ice court or is she talking about the walls around their hearts? I think it's being literal about like, yeah, I, I, I think that'd be really cool. I, I ship it. That's that That's cool. I, I think it's a double... Double one? Yep. I see where you're going with it. That that would be really cool, but I think it's also literally like, I mean, she's gotten through Fjordan defenses um, plenty of times. But she also did with Matthias, Matthias. as well. So I think, it has, a, I think yeah. it has a double meaning. Yeah. I just thought it was fun. Well, it's very interesting when we think just of her story and how far into Fjorda she is like, she's become like a... She's not a Fjordan, but you know, who would have guessed she would have been living there and like done so much and like pretty much just very much into the yeah. Puritan life when it's crazy. Yeah. Yas queen. <laughs> um, but it does bring up a lot of interesting things. Mm-hmm. So yeah, let us know what you think. If you guys have any questions, please shoot them our way. We love answering them. Um, I think we did actually. I'm or sorry. be part of the discussion. And yes. And if you have it. thoughts on what we've said, then Put them down in the comments Do. or go to our socials. Yeah. But hold on a sec. We, I forgot. And see, we're going to remember this, which is going to be great because we, I never remember this. We had um, Terry in Kentucky had questions for us and we answered one of them. And then we had to save the next one for the next episode. Mm. So, Terry, here we go. We got it. Okay. So the next question is, and if you could, okay, if you could be, Part of any of the books, which series would you be in? Shadow and Bone, Six of Crows, or King of Scars? Okay, so just wanted to throw that out there. So you could be part of any of the books, which series would you be in? So, okay, so first off, my thought is, am I going to be like a random, like, ethereal Kai Eric in this? Or am I taking the place of a character? You didn't specify, Terry. Mm. It's hard because they got to think. So it's up for interpretation. Okay, but yeah, so... You could just be you. Okay. I... Okay. I. It's so hard. I kind of want to go all the way back so I could be a part of the entire story. 
um, yeah. and be like mean girls with like be there with Zoya uh, right in yeah. the very beginning and just be like, oh my God, I could be like her gay BFF. <laughs> GBF. Which is, like, yeah, which would be perfect walking through. But like, then you know? I would have to stab her. Well, I mean, but I mean, I she needs me. She would need me. I'd help guide her. And then I could be along and then um, oh, I would just have to survive everything. That <laughs> yes, would be very you would have hard. To survive everything. So that makes me kind of want to not do any of that because I don't think I'd really survive all of that. Well, there's things to survive in all of it. So good I know, luck. but I really, 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 really want to see Zoya as a dragon. You know, so right. I kind of want to be in the King of Scars. Like, I mean, just skip all gotcha. that. I know a lot of our fans would just jump right in and be like, I'm going to be a, a part of the heist with Six of Crows. I feel like that's going to be everybody's answer. But of course, I'm just more concerned about being with Zoya. I mean, I would be in Ketterdam because that's just me. I'm I know <laughs> much so, more dark and twisty. So, so would you be I in would, that story? Like, I mean, I don't know what part of the story I would be in, really. OK, so you'd be Six of Crows duology. Yeah, I would be in that. That um, area. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I would do. Was that part of it? What? What we? What part of the story? Yeah. Like, was, like it, how we would be a part of the story? No. The question was just if we could be a part of any of the books. Which series would you be in? So I mean, I, I would be in. I'd be in Six Crows. I love that. Um, like the the era ish that it is. It's very well, yeah. like. It's very like nineteen thirties Amsterdam England ish like um like that show that I can't think of the name right now and now I feel foolish. It's okay. You uh. mentioned to me <laughs> thousands of times, so I should be the one that remembers it. Peaky Blinders. Yes, which I still haven't watched. Uh, I know. I love it. I've watched it a, a billion times. So, so I love that whole era, and yeah, that's, that's what I would. And I think I would love to be able to visit Ketterdam. I just, I get attached to characters. Yeah. And I know Ketterdam would be there for me. I mean. You'd have to get through the fold. I, well, that's why I'm just, it's a toss up between being besties with Zoya and being her GBF <laughs> while she's a mean girl to our girl Alina. Or just skipping all the way ahead and being just part of King of Scars and just being an old relative she hadn't met in a long time or something. I, I don't know. Well, thank you for <laughs> yeah, thank you. that I'm... question. I hope that we answered things appropriately. Terry's probably like, that was not all. Like, I really didn't want you to dive that far in. But just for you all out there, you ask me a question that has to do with the Grishaverse, do not expect a short little answer. It's going to be a dive in. Because that's what I do. <laughs> that's why this podcast exists. It really exists. It well, it certainly isn't because you can talk right. It's definitely <laughs> not because I can speak. Because I stumble. Either one of us, really. <laughs> well, but you know, that's what makes it fun. Yeah. Just stumbling all over words. Exactly. We're just hanging out. We are. So that was. That was it. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm on accidentally. I'm You're my notes on from... the wrong one. No. So. <laughs> okay, well, it's none other than that very special time for Grisha news. Let's go live to our Grisha in the field, Alex. Hello, hello, <laughs> hello! Hi, oh, it's Alex. How, that's incredible. That was a moment. It was. We're so glad you're here. <laughs> Alex is here in the field. So, yes. What do we got going on? We actually have some casting updates. I know. They have officially started casting, and there was a leaked audition tape for Sturmhund. Wow. Do we know? Are there also video. Hmm? Do we know who that person was, by chance? I do not catch his name. I'll have okay. to look that up, and I will send that out to post. There, I was just wondering. I I can't remember 
his name, but a lot of people in the comment section were saying that they do not like him and that they will not be watching if he is cast. So um, apparently it's somebody that is well known, but, but not well known enough for me to know who it is. But see, and then I saw something where it was some actor from Game of Thrones. So who knows? It's some actor's brother from Game of Thrones. Oh, see, don't listen to the internet. <laughs> Well, don't I listen. love his voice for Nikolai, but I'm not too keen on his looks. But I understand makeup is a thing, so. Mm -hmm. See, I, I liked him for Sturmon, but I am unsure about the Nikolai aspect of it. And mm. there's a lot of debate whether or not we're going to get two separate actors for those two. Mm. Interesting. Because the post only said casting for Sturmon. Okay. All right. Hmm. Just, okay. Huh. Well, I mean, I could see that. I mean, maybe he's really that good at, like, <laughs> you know, just wham, just changing all of a sudden into being Nikolai. I would prefer to have one actor for both, but that's yeah. up to casting. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess we'll see. Sorry, we interrupted yeah. you. You're the one with all No, the you're perfectly fine. <laughs> Absolutely, you're good. We also have some videos circulating of Freddie Carter reading some Six of Crows passages. Somebody paid for them on Cameo. And oh, I did not know I needed them. <laughs> That's awesome. I have not seen those yet. I will send them to you. They are perfect. Please. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Wow. Well, that's some news. Very exciting. It is? Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. That's about it. Yeah. Well, hey, we got enough. That's an that definitely is enough for us to figure out. I I really do hope that they do have two actors though. I really hope you're right. Two? I, I'm sorry. I really hope they have one. one. I really don't hope. I really don't want them to have two. Is what I meant. To that say. would be confusing and weird. Yeah. Well, thank you, Alex. I hope the next week of you sitting in that field waiting for news to come is like entertaining. <laughs> so. I will I will have my net. Please do. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll see you later. Bye. Bye. See ya. Well, that was quite a bit of good news. It's fun to actually have news. I know. It's interesting. I can't wait to see what all that was really about. You know? Yes. Uh, it's exciting. I, I, I'm looking forward to the new casting. Exactly. We need Couldn't to see great. Wyland too. So, and I just love that we have Alex just hanging out in that field all day, yep. all day, every day. They're just, just hanging out, waiting, just waiting until <laughs> to, these to recordings catch, catch those news. Yep, those news things. They're just <laughs> easy to catch. Alex will have to come on to what if so Alex can do something. <laughs> I know to do something other than yeah. sitting in the field. Anyways, yeah. That was it. That was a good combo, I think. Yeah. Um, a lot of fun. So next week, we'll be covering chapters 14 and 15. And I promise you, we're not meaning to do just two chapters at a time. It's just the way these books have, this book has gone. Yeah. Which has worked out. It has. So anyways, well, we love you all. And oh my goodness gracious, this is like our shortest episode ever. Maybe. I think it is. <laughs> like, Wow. <laughs> That's Chris all right. This is going to have to give me some extra props here because, I mean, see, this is where I should stop. See, this is where it gets long. Okay. <laughs> Love you all so much. It's been fantastic. We're glad we're back to the book. Don't forget, find us on YouTube for all that extra fun Grishaverse content. If you have not subscribed to our socials, please, please, please do, especially on Instagram. I will be so excited when we can reach 1,000 followers We're on so close. In Instagram. And I'm just like, I never knew that we would ever get there. And that would be really cool. So, um, but anyways, please go enjoy the extra content on YouTube. There's going to be more and more of it. If you have any ideas, shoot them to us. We'd love to do them. We'd love to do a game with you. Seriously. Mm -hmm. Like, it would be so much fun. That's what um the What If episode one was. Me having fun with a fan. So, if you reach out, we're here. Anyways, we love you guys, and long live the Grishaverse. Like, we're at the end of the hour, so my voice is a little husky. It was. No, no mourners. mourners. No funerals.
send an email to info at grishacast.com. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, and Patreon at GrishaCast. This has been GrishaCast. Connect with us on the web at GrishaCast.com. And a very, very special thank you to our staff, Chris, Alex, Sid, Michelle, and Amber. 